dudes, what's up? Let's go back to 1993. Uh, this video is going to be super cash. I want to start doing a little bit more of these kind of videos where I'm just talking about some of the old projects. These are going to be super long form. I'm not going to edit them too much. Uh, just to kind of tell you some stories about how I got my start and look at some of my earliest works. Uh, this was my first ever published book. What had happened was I was hanging out with a lot of these weirdos at school. And when I say weirdos, I mean like I was one of these guys. We were comic book fans and we would uh, buy Ninja Turtle comics. And I was mostly into Ninja Turtles and Spawn. Those were like some of my favorite comics. And so I did a lot to copy what they were doing. And uh, this is before we had computers, before we did anything with scanning. Most of these pages were things that I was like kind of copying everything that I saw from uh, other popular comics. And I was just doing them on Kinko's paper, like printer paper. You just go to like a copy machine and then you print it out. So you draw them larger and then shrink them down. And, um, and so uh, my friend at school, uh, Matt Martin, was in my art class. We were best buds, but he was also my rival. And uh, <laughs> he was the best kind of rival to have because we challenged each other a lot, but we also helped each other a lot. And I recently reconnected with him and he clarified the story a bit of what had happened because I was just a young guy. I don't remember all the details too clearly, but he was telling me that uh, he was telling me that he had reached out to uh, Wizard Magazine and like got some of his artwork printed in Wizard Magazine. And then that that was the biggest comic book magazine in the country at the time in the industry. Uh, Wizard, if it was in Wizard Magazine, everybody knew about it. And so that was our favorite magazine. We'd get the Wizard Magazines. And it would have like a cover by McFarlane or Jim Lee or whoever was really hot at the time at Marvel Comics. This is before Image Comics uh, started and right around the time, same time actually. Anyway, so he had gotten some artwork printed in the letters column and then a local comic book store owner saw they were from the same town and he reached out to him. And then, so Matt Martin got his first comic book, Vortex, published through Hall of Heroes. And then uh, he was like, hey, you should uh, check out Trent Canuga's stuff. So we, we uh, yeah, that's how I kind of got my first start. Hall of Heroes was intended to be different artists every month trying to showcase new talent, new artists. I drew these logos. They're pretty bad. This first book was featuring a character called Deadbolt. I was a hardcore Christian, so he was always wearing a cross. <laughs> and so you'll see how that plays out in the story uh, throughout. Uh, but anyway, I, this is before computers, so I had to do a typewriter. This is my grandmother's typewriter uh, that I used to, to make this stuff. And uh, so you saw that I was 6'2". I haven't grown any taller, but I was 150 pounds. And man, I put on a few pounds. It's probably from eating too much of my favorite food, Fruit Loops and likely some Taco Bell. The Doors, still one of my favorite bands to listen to. And uh, favorite comics, X-Factor, The Max, and Wildcats. Yeah, you can see that, definitely. Favorite artists, look at this. Jim Lee, Jay Lee, Sam Keefe, and Todd McFarlane. But you know, I was a X-Factor fan, but like, what? I didn't, I, uh, Rob Liefeld didn't make the list? What, what? That's weird. Uh, favorite word. What's it a matter for you? <laughs> anyway, wearing my shirt, drink your milk. I was a weird kid. Look, published in 1993, and I was born in 77. So that means I was, what, 16? Anyway, the, the writing is completely nonsensical. It was a lot of, uh, well, it was a lot of copying what I saw in other superhero comics, which were basically like the world was full of these, like, chaotic anarchists and just punks in the street and mugging people and... And doing all this just violence and stuff. And so, like, the heroes would come in. They were, like, super, like, orderly. So they'd, like, bring order to the chaos of these, like, you know, crime-ridden streets and stuff. You see stuff like this in movies all the time back then, like Escape from New York and Terminator and stuff like that. Just, like, punkers everywhere. He's such a Spawn ripoff. Look at this. But it was kind of funny because Spawn was, like, uh, you know, gave his, he got his power from hell. But Deadbolt, he got his power from God. And uh, I think I even, like... Was looking, I was looking directly at Spider-Man pages when I was doing this book. And you can tell from the posing. This is so me trying to just copy what uh, Todd McFarlane was doing and drawing portraits from girls from magazines because we didn't have the internet. I didn't have a computer, as I said. The lettering, I think, might have been done by John Rose. And maybe, yeah, uh, John Rose was a guy that I knew from high school. He just had cleaner writing than me. My writing was very chaotic and uh so like a lot of this was actually written on the pages themselves and i must have given away all of this artwork but you can see the styles here this is almost like a very 80s style 
with the shirt loop. So like, stop stretching out your neck, girl. Sleep in pajamas. Don't sleep in your sweaters, okay? Look at this guy's eyebrows. It's such a Jonah Jameson uh, ripoff, this guy. It's his boss. She's a reporter. And uh, I think at the story, uh, gosh, I don't even remember. I haven't read it in a while. <laughs> but I remember that he was so in love with her. And then by the end of this book, I think he actually kills himself. Why? Why doesn't she love me? I was one of those kids that was uh, always had a crush on some girl that didn't know I existed. And, uh, and I'd just write in my comments, why, why doesn't she know I exist? Hey, hey, uh, here's Backdraft. Here's the big villain of the comic who shows up just in time before the end, uh, just in time uh, to, to face off with Deadbolt. And then they have like this cool rooftop fight. Look, your girlfriend, this is where I took her life all those years ago. Oh, that's right. He, uh, he, he uh, killed himself because his girlfriend got murdered. Uh, by backdraft what a jerk right you know killing a superhero's girlfriend you know what an origin story you know god sent him back because he had better like good things to do left in in the world but he deals with all of the pain it's like he couldn't run away from the same pain that uh that made him take his life look at this he drops a uh, backdraft no 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 yeah deadbolt himself gets what happens here they both dive off of the roof in the tiniest frame. This should have been flip-flopped, man. The biggest frame should have been them flying off of the roof. That's the dramatic moment, not some tiny little thing. I didn't know what I was doing. I was 16. Don't don't be too too uh, rough on me, okay? I was learning. And look at this. I'm like, eh, I'll just switch the page. I'll just turn the whole page to the side because they did that in uh, Spider-Man one time. And I thought it was really interesting, really changing it up. Actually, really, um, one of the things that I really in inspired me the most about those comic book creators at Marvel at the time was that they were always trying new things, just switching it up, you know, really inspired me to push through boundaries and try to do different things with the layouts of pages and things and not just do things the way they'd always been done. So uh, this was a smashing success. It sold a thousand copies. And that was pretty good back in the day uh, for a book that had to go to the printer and and uh, was nationally distributed. It was quite a quite an honor, but it wasn't considered a success really by by most industry standards. But you could see that I was getting better. Like the following summer, I was like, I'm gonna make a book about the stalker, this guy named the stalker, right? Which is funny because I was also like this love sick kind of like a obsessed weirdo uh, <laughs> with whatever girl I liked at the time. <laughs> so I made my villain the stalker, which was. Uh, kind of funny. And then, oh, this like previews the next book's uh, artist, Nadir. And uh, so that was Hall of Heroes number one. That was kind of what kicked off my uh, comic book career technically. Although I made zero dollars from that book. So, so that you should know that when you're making your own thing. Now, here's the thing. I didn't necessarily make money for other people, uh, except for maybe Alan Stewart. <laughs> that guy still owes me money. But uh, it, it wasn't, I was still investing in myself. I was, I was doing free work because I was investing in my future self. And this one, I was like, man, I'm going to just do my own colors because the, you'll notice, look, I, we didn't know how to color. There was no computer coloring and I didn't know how to color or anything like that. So um, but basically, like I would just take markers to it and try to do marker colors. This is before I had never seen a manga before. I had never seen like how comics in, in uh, other countries were made. I didn't know how comics were made. We got a VHS one time that showed uh, how what kind of brushes and pens McFarlane and um, Rob Liefeld and Jim Lee used, and that's what we just started to do. And I found out they use brushes sometimes. So this book, I started to get very experimental with like brush work. This is all inked with a brush and uh, India ink. And you can really see my Jim Lee influence here, how I, like I was influenced dramatically by him. Um, in this issue, uh, Deadbolt kills himself. Um, <laughs> chapter one. Chapter one, huh? Uh, oh, look, John Rose did letter this one. So it, it, I don't know that it's necessarily better, but, uh, oh, look, dedicated to Matt Martin, my rival. I've only known Matt for a couple of years, but it seems like it's been all my life. Oh, we were so tight. I used to envy him, and that just made me work even harder to do better. He helped me to find God when my own soul was formless and empty. Wow, that's so dramatic. 
So I thank him for all of his inspiration. Ah, yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, you know, it was a good thing really for me to find Christianity in my uh, teenage years because I, I had such a um, chaotic childhood. And you really see that in my books. Like, it's very tragic. All the stories are about death and loneliness. And look at this, a whole page that's just black. Nothing. Nothing but darkness. Darkness in my own de empty desert plain. Wow, you almost kind of like feel the uh, the formation of my next book, Creed, kind of happening here. He's like in his own soul, looking at his own void, his own emptiness, right? Uh, but wait, in the distance there is a light so bright, so dense, adjoined by two other less sizable lights. It's hard to read. A unity of such tranquility that its power has no equal. And there was someone like the son of man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very, very, very religious stuff. I love the sense of community, of going to my church and having like a youth group. And uh, I was certainly not uh, accepted at school. So having a place that was like nonviolent and there weren't like things breaking or people screaming all the time, that was really nice. And so like... <laughs> So like that was my connection. Oh yeah, Vortex, by the way, if you don't know, check out Vortex. It was like super, like a very Christian superhero kind of a book. You can see why I looked up to Matt so much. His line work was so clean and mine was so messy. I didn't know how to reference from anything other than other comic books. And we, like I said, no Google, no computers. So like, it wasn't like I could just look up what a horse looked like. I had to find a photo or go to a library and find a picture of a horse. To, to learn how to draw it. Oh, yeah. Nice pen. Nice. Uh, I read it for the articles. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, this one is... <laughs> I think that was the, the image where I was like, I'm defining a new style. I was really into that Jay Lee on Namor kick where he'd use a toothbrush. I read somewhere in like Wizard Magazine where he used a toothbrush to spatter ink onto the page. And I was like, I'm going to do that. I want gray on my pages. That doesn't really print very well, as you can tell. This was done through like a local printer, by the way. Um, just like, uh, I think we ran like maybe 800 copies of this book. Very low print run on Deadbolt number one. This was technically my second book. Oh, introducing Morningstar, Cameron Enders. Uh, he got his own book over at uh, Hall of Heroes as well. We were running a talent search. So like we were always looking for new artists because we felt like there were so many talented, passionate artists out there that just weren't getting a shot at comics and we knew how to publish comics so we were like yeah let's just build it out man why not bring on everybody who's a, like a passionate comic book creator and um you know what's funny is that this didn't even continue the backdraft story so like i had a real hard time just like being consistent with my story and like going hey uh, next book uh i'll resolve all this <laughs> not the best storytelling but, uh, you know, there's a reason why this book didn't particularly sell very well. You can definitely see early makings of Creed happening here, though. Look at that. The distorted kind of city with the trees growing up and the jungles. And then um, I got away from drawing the sexy 80s style women, though. I, maybe I need to get back to that, you know. It seems like we don't have any of that anymore in comic books. I don't know why that is. Uh, so this was introduce another villain. Hey, guess what? You know, that's the way you make a comic. You just do a bunch of like exposition for the first 90% of the book and then throw in a villain at the very end and then say to be continued. Look, Stalker's Game. How is this the Stalker's Game? He shows up in the last four pages. <laughs> ah, my, my young friend, young Trent. You had so much to learn, so much to learn about panel flow, too. Look, she's pointing at the other page. My eye wants to go over here because she's pointing. Ow, dude. Like, make that swoop down. Um, I'm going to start doing a lot more videos about breaking down how to draw comics here on my channel. So uh, if you're interested in learning from my mistakes, uh, you know, check out uh, some of these extra videos I've been, I'm, I'm going to be working on. So these are the... Uh, these are the deadbolt days. Ooh, this was huge, by the way. Tony Atkins. Okay, so I was, uh, it went to a comic book convention in like South Bend, Indiana, which was where I was from. And I met my first like comic meeting with a comic book pro. And it was so influential. 
He did this drawing of my character. I think he even did it for free. Tony Atkins, I think he was famous at the time for drawing an Aliens comic, and I loved the Aliens movies. So this was like really a big deal uh, for me to uh, to get an artist, a real pro drawing my character. At my first comic book convention, and he's a great inspiration and a great guy. I lost touch with Tony At Atkins. I hope he's doing okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I got my portrait in there. Drink your milk. Remember that. Uh, what does it say here? Deadbolt critique page number one. Well, the title says it all. Every issue, I will set aside a small section to critique the previous chapter. For those of you people that don't want uh, know what a critique is, then I will tell you. <laughs> a critique is a personal opinion of a finished piece of artwork. Let's begin. I loved it. <laughs> My mom told me to be more positive. So, uh, yeah, because I used to just trash at everything I did. So out of defiance, I was like, I think it's great. I love it. Uh, the story has a concept and sets up well for a spectacular sequel, which never happens. So bah, you failed, young Trent. Uh, if you haven't, haven't noticed, I've accidentally stumbled across a brand new style of drawing for me. It's kind of cartoonish but it has a lot of sharp edges and corners, which is unique from my usual McFarlane-esque soft edge stuff. There is a display of this when comparing the last and final page of, of what? Final page number, oh, page number 24 to page number 21 when the stalker emerges from the blood. Let's go look. Page, yeah, 24. Look at that style. I've stumbled on that. I stumbled on that style. It came to me in a dream. And page 21, you can see the difference. Look, that's like McFarlane style, you know? Uh, and that's like, and that's like, bam, like Creed Trent Canuga style, almost. Not really. I mean, it's still kind of bad. Anyway, what else did I say about it? I personally like the change. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Let me know by sending your comments to the address for the letters page. Yeah, I had to do all this on paper. I had to do all that on paper. Oh, yeah, that was my address. Don't go there. <laughs> it's like some stranger lives there. You don't want to bug them, please. Uh, so this is... The letters page was written, again, on like a, a typewriter. And I had to... Ooh, look at that. I even said it was coming out in November. It was scheduled for it. Uh, yeah, never happened. Uh, oh, look, this box here is to take up space. Do not remove. I had no sense of being critiqued. I was like, look, I did it that way because I like it that way. And anybody who disagrees, well, uh, I don't care. <laughs> I'm 16. What do I care? So uh, I always love these like stats pages. You know where that comes from? For me, it was uh, when I was a kid, I used to collect Transformers and they always had like stats. And I was like, oh, this is where they're from. And this is this is what they do. And like, oh, I didn't know Deadbolt was an ex-police officer. His eyes are blue. Why is that? Why is he 207 pounds? His muscle. That's why. I had to look up. How big is a, or how much does a muscular man uh, who's my <laughs> my size weigh? Because I was only 150 pounds. Anyway, so uh, that's my, that's Deadbolt. This was like inspired by a local graphic design thing. I thought I wanted to get into graphic design if the art thing didn't work out. I was still 16. So, you know, please don't be too mean to me about the comments about it. I know it's not particularly great, but, you know, I'm still proud to have this. I think it entered my world. Like... There was, there, in some ways, as I'm drawing comic books again, it takes me back and it makes me remember how free I really was. I don't, I didn't worry as much back then. I just, I was free and I just made stuff because I was like, oh, it's going to be so cool. It's going to be so cool. And I couldn't wait to make it, you know? And uh, I think that's the best place to be in your first couple of years of making a thing. Like when you're going out on your own and trying to set up your art career. So I hope this was interesting for you guys to look at. I do, next issue, I want to check this out. Part two of the Hall of Heroes years. Uh, next issue, we're going to talk, or the next episode, we're going to talk about these first two Creed books and where that came from. I'm going to give you some real uh, lengthy, meaty insight into where, like, really, this was what I consider where my style came from. Like, that was one summer. So before I go, if you have a copy of Deadbolt, if you got a copy of Deadbolt or you have a fun story of having met me in my younger years, please drop those in the comments below. It's been really great to reconnect with my comic book fans. 
And if you're at all curious to see where I've gone since then, uh, check out my latest art book. This is The World of Twilight Monk. It's available in paperback on a nice glossy paper uh, through Amazon and through the links below. And dudes, until next time, I'll catch y'all. Manyan de bon and ciao, baby. Oh, yeah.